Hello everyone, in today's video we're going to be experimenting with the importance of spacing formations in naval groups. So uh, what I have right here is a group of uh, Tupolev uh, 22M3Ms. These are the newest new 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 ones with these awesome AS-16 kickback missiles. Those things are like cheating, they're amazing. And down here we have an American carrier battle group. Uh, we have ourselves the Enterprise surrounded by really really efficient and effective escorts. So what I've done is I've spaced these guys out to be about one mile or so apart. So the test here is, is how much spacing is too much spacing or how much is too little. Now, one thing we do know about command is that we can get a little cheesy here and basically stack everybody into the same point in space and basically create like a mega, almost like cheesing tactic because ships don't run into each other. We'll experiment with that in a minute, but let's go ahead and establish a little bit of a baseline here. So and normally we're just going to go ahead and grab ourselves a good old fashioned attack. Uh, we've got plenty of rounds. So we'll go ahead and allocate six. That looks pretty good. Grab this one right here, grab this one right here. We'll go ahead and allocate six, allocate all weapons. Grab this one, grab this one, grab this one, allocate all. Grab this one, grab this one, grab this one, allocate all. And service. <laughs> Weapon away. Now these are actually pretty cool to watch because uh, they climb so absurdly high and basically drop face first into the atmosphere at extremely stupid speeds. And you can see this is uh, real time. It's literally, that's how quick those things go. They just drop off the wing and going up. And of course, uh, when we do test this, I imagine the American group will pick these radar things up on radar pretty much instantaneously. I mean, look at this thing. We're sitting here cruising at about Mach 5 or so, and you can see this little carrier group down here just sort of chilling and uh, when you've got quite a bunch of nastiness kind of coming towards it. So let's go ahead and swap over to the other side real quick. And they've already deployed pretty much every Aegis missile that was ever developed for the purposes of engaging this target. Let's go ahead and pop it over to a 3D view real quick and see what this looks like. Again, these are always fun to watch. Yeah, let's grab this one right here. <laughs> Up they go. Now keep in mind, um, the interception uh, trajectory of these weapons has never quite been perfect, but I'm not complaining too, too much because it will work fairly well here. So this is a one mile separation. All right, let's find out what happens. Speed up time a little bit here. Here comes the fun part. Oh man, it'd just be like raining pieces of things right now down in the American carrier group. Oh, look at this, look at this, look at this. Oh, we got a leaker. Oh man, look at that. <laughs> well, nobody got hit, despite one of the most lethal attacks you could probably summon with a group of aircraft of that style. So those guys were about one nautical mile apart. So um, let's change up our strategy a little bit and try to spread everybody out a little more conventionally. All right, so now we spread everybody out so that they're 10 nautical miles away from the center. Uh, let's go ahead and uh, try it this time. So I'm going to go ahead and select everybody here. Again, we'll use the exact same technique. We're not going to do anything unique here. Grab that one, grab that one, grab that one, allocate everybody, grab that one. Oh, that one was actually out of range. Allocate everybody. Let's grab this one. Uh, that one looks pretty good. Allocate everybody. All right, looks pretty good. Of course, we don't know which one is the American uh, carrier or whatever it is, but uh, it's probably safe to assume it's the one in the middle. All right, so we fire everybody. We'll go ahead and switch over to the American side again, and then we'll kind of watch the fireworks. So the first thing we notice is a lot of these weapons were fairly well spread out. But um, again, these long-range interceptors have plenty of time. You're never going to hit anything on a deflection shot. Weapons are raining in. Looks like uh, some of them did get up to the carrier. Let's go ahead and see what happens. Uh, they're raining down. That one's going to get right on through. It uh, looks like it did not strike anything. And it uh, looks like the damage is uh, pretty complete here. And uh, it looks like none of them did any damage, despite them being tremendously effective. So even though our range was longer, because especially that particular, the standard missile that this thing carries, it was able to basically reach all the way over there for the purposes of that engagement. Now let's tweak this a little bit and try a different strategy. All right, so now we've tweaked the formation a little bit using what we've learned. Now we have the carrier on the inside and we have our screening vessels along the edge in line of where the expected attack is gonna come. Now, because I, you know, I'm basically sitting here as a Soviet player, a Russian player, the case is way too far into the future for that. I'm looking at this going, well, obviously that one's the carrier. So um, fire everything at that. So I'm going to go grab everybody, grab everybody, grab everybody. And we'll grab everybody one last time, press start. And let's see what happens this time. Point it like this and off go. Whoa, that's a lot of weapons. <laughs> All right, we'll switch over to this side. Obviously, our escorts are going to open up the uh, bidding immediately. The ones of the SM2s and SM3s are going to fire first. And now you can see everybody else joining in with the older weapon types. And this is just like, it's like a line formation. Oh, looks like somebody got through. Let's zoom in a little bit. Remember, this is uh, taking place in real time. These deflection shots are very difficult to take, but it looks like the carrier is defending itself pretty well here. 
And several of those weapons. Look at that one. Wow. And it looks like we have a couple more leaking through, but fortunately this system was literally designed for this kind of a problem. And you can see it's basically splattering just about everything that's got through. And it looks like we got one more. I love how they can retarget. It's just like a little flurry of explosives. Okay. Wow. That was, uh, that was messy. <laughs> let's see what we did for losses and expenditures here. Well, we got all of the bombers. And let's see here. Oh boy. That's over 100 individual weapons were deployed for this particular purpose. Which is... Uh, <laughs> that's a lot. But you can see it worked well. So now we're going to go for the ultimate cheese strategy. So what is the ultimate cheese strategy? So because these ships do not take up any space and they can shoot through each other, we can create these uh, rather interesting little strategies here where we put everybody, um, let's see, this guy is about, let's call that, oh, it's like 151 meters away. So these vehicles are in each other right now. So we'll go ahead and uh, group them and we'll go ahead and order them to uh, proceed up north like that. Go ahead and switch back to the other team real quick. Grab these guys. We'll go ahead and uh, activate everything so we can see what's happening. Oh, it looks like there's a couple targets. Now, one of the fun things is if you let this run a little while, eventually this contact at this altitude fuses into one. It's a great way to confuse human players, by the way. So um, I have no idea what we're shooting at down here. So I'm just going <laughs> to go to town as I usually do. Grab everybody. Grab everybody. Grab this one. Uh, number three. You know, I feel like we're going to hit number five this time. I don't think we've ever actually launched everything at number five. All right, looks good. Ready, fire. All right, so all of our tuple lifts are going to do what the tuple lifts do. Off they go. Now let's switch to the other side. Now this is going to look a little silly. Go ahead and pause for half a second here so we can check in the 3D view. 3D view. Go ahead and expand it a little. Let's click over here. Pick this guy right here. <laughs> look at this. It, it, it's legal. It's legal. They can do this. And remember, they shoot through each other. So you're never going to have to worry about the problem of, uh, you know, collisions or anything like that. So they're just kind of, uh, you know... Working at it, I guess. By the way, one of the aircraft, uh, the destroyers, is actually inside of the aircraft carrier. It's a very safe place for it, I gotta say. All right, we'll gotta let all the fireworks kind of settle themselves out here. Remember, these guys are basically a single target now. And they're able to concentrate all of their fire with no deflection shooting, which means it's going to be much more likely for the projectiles to actually come in contact with that which they were trying to shoot at. Go ahead and zoom in, you can watch the fireworks. Oh, this is so much fun to watch. All right, how are we doing? Most of these are still in the airborne phase. They haven't quite entered the uh, terminal phase, although a couple of them are getting pretty darn close here. You can see this poor guy right here. Is, uh, he's feeling pretty confident, but the uh, reality is uh, he's actually gotten several more missiles launched at him. It's just that eventually your attack view is uh, not going to be able to keep up with that many new objects at one time. And you can see, uh, let's see, a couple more of these are being obliterated. You can see them changing targets at the last possible second. And that battle was over. Let's go ahead and take a look at our losses and expenditures here. Scroll down here, and we did about the same amount of weapons. So hopefully this video was helpful in making you realize the importance of spacing. Again, the critical takeaway here, if you're looking for something, oh, and this is something I did not know, is the fact that you have the ability to actually put ships very close together. Now, the real reason you would do that, by the way, is if one of the ships got hit and started sinking, it would still be a target, and therefore it would keep being targeted by the same incoming weapons. And basically, the one hawk that is now on fire like crazy is just going to get spammed out of existence, protecting the more important vessels, which are basically 60 feet away from it. Again, sort of interesting how that works out, but kind of fun at the same time. Enjoy.